Did it not go? Oh, here we are. All right, sorry for the false start there. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll go ahead and click through the, the countdown here. Thanks everybody for joining us today. We've uh, got a great uh, topic on tap again. We're gonna talk about uh, at a high level, just uh, summer here in the Idaho area. We do have other podcasts that drill down into more specific details, but uh, we're just gonna talk about generalities uh, just to give you an idea of, of the things to do with friends and family. We've got a great host on tap again, Keith Kellum. How you doing, Keith? Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. Real quick, though, we uh, we do want to um, do a couple of things, just a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, if we haven't met yet, my name is Jared Lee. I'm the associate broker and team lead at uh, My Home Connection, also known as MHC Realty. Well, we do have a sponsor for today, the Perfect Home Buying Process. We've spent the last couple of decades uh, refining uh, this process. There's a lot. It's a very comprehensive uh, program uh, from the podcast series to answer uh, you know, most, if not all, of your, your questions in regards to home buying. We've got some real estate secrets that uh, we want you to know. We've got a lot of different reports. Um, if you're um, data-driven, want to know property, community, neighborhood reports, things along those lines. We just received our new um, comprehensive relocation and lifestyle guide, and we'll actually show you bits and pieces of that today. Uh, but that is part of the perfect home buying process. Uh, and of course, pr different property reports on properties that I uh, might be of interest in. And then we'll chat a little bit about the uh, no obligation consultation and how to take advantage of the up to $1,000 offer for your appraisal and your home inspection. But uh, other than that, We'll bring uh, Keith back on and chat a little bit about uh, summers here in Idaho. I don't know if you have a particular season here in Idaho that's your favorite, Keith? You know, every season uh, has has its uh, particular flavor. Yep. Right now, I'm pretty excited about winter. <laughs> yeah. So, kind of odd to talk about summer in the... You get, you're getting the your skis up, right? Oh, and we can finally get out there and get some skiing in, but... Uh, uh, you know, so the way it works is uh, every time the, the calendar says it's another season, there it is here uh -huh. in Idaho. It's a wonderful thing. So it'll be summer soon enough and we can get to, uh, you know, riding our bikes down on the green belt and uh, paddle boarding and mountain biking in the, in the foothills. And yeah. All the fun stuff. Yeah, I don't think any of them are my favorite. They all, to your point, all have their own just, you know, amazing, you know, sports and recreation to do. And of course, the, the weather. Uh, I, I do like um, not being cold, <laughs> generally speaking. So <laughs> obviously that comes along with the with the summer. But uh, well, let me let me pop on here real quick to our um New relocation guy just comes excited to share with everybody. Uh, again, you know, feel free to reach out, and we'll either send you a link, or if uh, you're interested in the perfect home buying process, we can um, get you started on that. But um, this new relocation guide goes through a lot of the different uh, activities that we have here, and interestingly, almost all of them are, are almost world class. So it's not just you know, it's like mediocre type type stuff. But if you go down the list, like here, for example, the second one, um, you know, we even had George Bush uh, during his presidency come out and ride Tamarack uh, just a little north of here, which, you know, obviously if the president flies out while he's the president, um, it, it got on the got on the radar at that level. Um, we just recently had a podcast on um, uh, camping, the different areas to go, the different considerations to to think about, but uh, this guide has, you know, just a, a wealth of information um, about the things to consider. And then if you want specifics on each one of these, almost all these are broken down into uh, their own individual podcast. And speaking of, hold on real, real quick, Keith, sorry about that. I do want to show um, the listeners the um, location on our website. So myhomeconnection.com you'll see why Idaho and then all of these segments are broken down into, um, you know, their, their, their own page. And then they have embedded within them the, the podcast that we did. So anyway, just want to give you some, some resources, but uh, let's go back to the screen share here. Um, 
Yeah, you know, uh, let's 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 focus on uh, hiking a little bit because it seems like uh, that one is often a miss under appreciated or a underappreciated uh, thing to do. Got some great hiking. You know, as you're scrolling there, that one really jumped out at me. I've been uh, uh, really looking forward to doing some more hiking this year. Uh, there's so many trails. Uh, yeah. My my wife talks about the one. Uh, oh, it's it's up off of Bogus Basin Road. What's that one? That uh, Dry Creek. Mm-hmm. And then you can go up to some. I think there. Well, there's a confluence. I don't know. And then, and then I really want to do a uh, stack rock, you know, up off of bogus. Um, mm-hmm. And just up I think that's a and road, right? Yeah. Up towards the top. Mm-hmm. And then I think the, that's a pretty good size, a uh, couple few hour uh, uh, each way hike, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, I'm really looking forward to, to that one. Yeah. I've really uh, begun to appreciate the hiking trails that we have around here. I just didn't realize there was so many of them and, and just different, you know, um, you know, beginner, you know, intermediate, you know, uh, advanced type stuff. So you can, and, and that's the case with most of this, you know, there's stuff in town here that you can just literally go to after work. Like what we, we, and uh, some other guys went up to table rock, you know, not too long ago here. That's just downtown Boise. that yeah that's a great great hike and then the view from up there oh amazing amazing yeah um and then uh the other thing i was going to comment on oh it's just so yeah the a lot of them are are local and you can just literally go to after work or in some cases before work if you want um but then there's other of these that you can go you know out of town a couple hours like for example this mountain biking one we, we just mentioned tamarack that's a couple hours north of here um, but you can also go downtown Boise, um, kind of uh, down by the VA there, and they've got all of those nice runs uh, just on the foothills there. Um, you can go, uh, we'll have a podcast in regards to the Green Belt. That's an amazing uh, place to, to bike bike ride there, just paralleling the, um, the Green Belt. So, oh, yeah. You know, most of these, uh, again, you can you can make a, a partial day, a half day, a full day out of a, a weekend trip out of them. Um, but they're all they're all all pretty uh, amazing. Um, I'm trying to think which other one jumped out at you, Keith, as we were kind of scrolling through here. Oh, I forgot to mention camping when I when I said uh, paddle boarding and mountain biking. And uh, uh, there's so many great places to camp. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them, um, the the ones that you can uh, uh, reserve have really gotten booked up early. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, around the McCall, what's that one in McCall close to downtown, whatever that is, that one. Uh, oh, Ponderosa? Ponderosa. Yeah. Boy, that one, that one stays pretty full, but it's super nice with their, uh, I couldn't believe how nice the showers were there. Yep. And they were free. Yeah. You know, coming from California, like everything costs money, you know, <laughs> and a lot of money. You know, yeah, it's barely workable and, and you got to put 100 quarters in it. But that was uh, some super nice showers uh, and they were free. Yeah, the camping one's interesting. Well, I like most of these. You can do them at a very inexpensive, you know, to super expensive level. You know, if, if we, you know, went just down by my house here. Uh, there's a great uh, mountain bike uh, trails and it's free and it's, I don't even think it's two miles down the road. Um, so I just take, you know, I can leave my house and go to ride there, uh, you know, easy access, cheap, or I can head up north for the weekend and I can blow a couple grand, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and anywhere in between, you know, if you want some kind of middle of the road and you want to make a full day out of it and spend a few bucks and, you know, like you saw here, jump in hot springs. You know, of course, this photo is of uh, of a winter time, but some of the hot springs out in here around here are amazing. Have you been to many? Oh, I've been to a couple up around Garden Valley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Gold Fork. Have you been to Gold Fork? Um, I don't know what it's called. Just south is of that the one up in? No, no, I I can't believe it. It's right down the street oh, from. I was going to say, <laughs> you're always <Yeah>. there. <laughs> He always talks about it, but uh, but never have gone over there. There's, there's yeah, the one. There's a couple in Garden Valley that I've been to. Um, they're both real close to the river. And then, 
Well, they're all uh, then down off of uh, where where uh, Bank or er, Loman, close to Loman, Pine Flats Campground. Okay. There's a, a really neat. It it comes down off of like a waterfall, mm. hot spring. But of course, yeah, it's down by the river too. So. Yeah, and those um, hot springs, same situation. You can either go travel to some. You know, they're not monitored. They're not managed. You can just pull off the road a little bit and go sit in the hot springs, you know, by yourself or, you know, there might be some people there or there are some like the gold forks. You, you know, you, you spend quite a bit of time, you know, on a, on a, a dirt road and then you get there and there's um, literally like a professional, you know, they got a, a, a big uh, yurt there and you can, you know, rent towels, you, you can buy food. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a full on, you know, kind of ordeal. So as fancy as you want, or as uh you know, kind of uh, plain as, as as you'd like, but all all fun nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, and then there's the one that they it fills a swimming pool up there in in Garden Valley also the, um, at the golf course there. Well, at the golf course, there's one, and then uh, uh, that's that's open year round. And then if but if you head up into the Boise National Forest, um, there's like a loop, big loop, and then on 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 the right side of the loop is uh and in the winter you can snowmobile up there and mm. you know uh you get a burger and go swimming and then snowmobile Amazing. back out uh <laughs> it, it, what i can't remember you really got winter on the mind don't you <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i mean we we are here we got we got snow on the on the ground interestingly today so it, it makes it easy yeah, to talk for, about this is Summer podcast. <laughs> summer pod. I just find it interesting. Oh, big... tea and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's freezing out. <laughs> but uh, uh, whitewater rafting, uh, from what I understand here, is world class. Uh, I've been on a few of the, the whitewater rafting uh, trips. What is it? The South Fork. And same same deal. You, you know, you want to get a guide and you can either go for a couple hours. You can do a half day. You can do a full day. And I think they even have like a weekend trip. If I remember right. I'm not sure, but uh, again, up in Garden Valley, um, right there through whatever river that is, it comes right through Garden Valley, and then it comes over. I don't know the names. That's of the them, Payette, right? South Fork of Payette. Yeah, and then what's the one coming down the 55? Um, mm, well, no they way. they meet right there. There's a confluence, and and uh, right before you get there is the is the uh, what do they call that? The stair step or what is that called? It's oh. a super dangerous spot. Yeah, like a uh, category five or whatever, however they classify them. Yeah, people die there. Uh, but it's it's from that confluence from banks on down is about an eight mile float that is uh it's not too crazy, but it's uh but it's got some good rapids in it. And that one's that's a really fun one. Yeah, I wanted to show the folks where we were talking about. So, because um, your your folks used to live up in Garden Valley, so you get a lot of the references um, to that. But you know, just uh, what forty five minutes, maybe an hour north of town, fifty miles. Yeah, yeah. So just take a ride off of the banks here. But yeah, the river just floats. Uh, you can, you can float this river, you know, uh, from Garden Valley over here to Banks and, and down. Um, you know, so so that's obviously a, a big, you know, uh, white water rafting opportunity. Um, but th those are generally kind of where we're we're talking about in those those areas up north uh, by um, Cas. Uh, excuse me, where am I? Donnelly, Donnelly. So we go up a little bit north. This is where we we're talking about for Tamarack. So you're gonna in the summer, you, you've got you know mountain biking here, backpacking. Uh, they've got zip line up at Tamarack, um, you know, um, hot tubs, you know, just pr pretty much everything you can think of. So these are kind of the hot spots, kind of this McCall Donnelly area. If you want to go out of town for the day or for the weekend, Garden Valley, uh, Keith's talked a lot about here. And then um, up at Bogus Basin is another area kind of uh, north of town here, north uh, west of town is um, uh, another resort that we have we, mountain biking and hiking and even a roller coaster. They built in a roller coaster in the last couple of years. 
you know, of course, and then the river, Boise River going right through town and uh, which doesn't have really any rapids on it, barely at all. And you can you can paddleboard down it. I've I've uh, I've only paddleboarded it once, but uh, uh, that's another thing I'd like to do more of. Yeah, this um, this is really cool to go right through downtown. Yeah, right here. Here we go. Yeah, so we're actually going to do a podcast uh, on the the Boise River and the Greenbelt. So we'll we'll go into way more detail in that. But basically, you you start up here at the lake, uh, Lucky Peak, um, and it's about 25, 26 miles of of, of Greenbelt, mostly um, not paved, but um, you know they, they've improved it all. And to to what Keith pointed out, you can paddleboard down it you can tube down it you got people fishing out there um so really if you want summer activity where you don't have to go very far you want a lot to do you want to eat you want to recreate um there's events you know kind of lots of different like tree fort uh musical event musical festival you know all of that are, are typically um and then they got that um the park the whitewater uh, park um, down here along the river. So in the summer, uh, if you want that kind of inexpensive, easy, quick place to go, um, the Greenbelt's a great place. I'm trying to think of, uh, oh, Lake Lowell. So if you want to, you know, if you're on the other side of kind of the valley here, kind of Canyon, Canyon County area, same stuff, you know, fishing, skiing, you know, just a, just I've not spent of, too much time at all out there. Yeah, you and I both live in, in Ada County, so kind of the uh, when what we're talking about here is just kind of Center Valley. Uh, it splits Ada County to the east or to the right, and it splits Canyon County, you know, to the left to the uh, to the west here. So, you know, depending on what side of town you live on, where you would likely you know recreate and, and, and where you would do things uh, in the in the summer, because we're both in Ada County, I think we're going to find a tendency to talk a lot more about things that are either in Ada County or close to that. Um, I live here in the Eagle area specifically because it, it affords me such quick access to head up north to some of the areas where we're talking about, um, or I can just, you know, take State Street down downtown Boise here. Um, but uh, we've got, you know, some agents that live out here in um, Canyon County, and, and they just love all the things to do, you know, out in this area is more, more, more ag land, uh, rodeo, uh, wineries. Nut. What's up? Wineries. Oh yes. Good point. Thank you, Keith. That's awesome. Um, we have a, a really good, um, uh, uh, winery presence here. Um, so a ton of vineyards out here, um, and then mixed in with wineries. Uh, I am trying to recall if, um, we had, that in our list here, golfing, bird watching. Um, yeah, somewhere in this relocation guide, it talks about, well, there's there's other things here uh, specifically, but the winery, the vineyards, Kina Caves. Um, like I said, guys, we just got this, so I uh, apologize, I'm kind of fumbling around here, but you're, you're seeing evidence of a lot of the things I'm, I'm talking about here, um, you know, floating the river, Julia Davis Park, downtown Boise. Um, I thought it talked about the the, the vineyards. Oh, and uh, uh, hops, lots of hops for local brewery out out west in Canyon County that you were talking about. So if you want to, you know, traverse that. But Saint Chapelle is a winery. I think it's our only national. Uh, we 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 deliver um, distribute nationally from Saint Chapelle. Hmm. In out in Canyon County, so you can go out there, spend a day, grab some food, you know, get your wine, get your flight of wine, whatever, whatever you want. But um, as this guy, that's funny. <laughs> There's a lot of the stuff we were just talking about, you know, downtown Table Rock. This is that view. I, I think this photo doesn't do it quite justice. Um, it doesn't. It, I imagine any photo would struggle to do that. <laughs> um, Penn, it, it, it leaves you. You can start your hike from the old uh, Idaho Penitentiary. So you would, you would see that you could tour that um, summer, fall, um, you know, our, our, our uh, Boise balloon uh, festival. That's always 
fun to watch. Uh, the Botanical Gardens is actually right down here next to the penitentiary and the entrance for Table Rock as well. So that's all down in the same area. Uh, this is downtown Boise uh, area here, uh, Freak Alley, where they just paint <laughs> over in between these, these buildings and the artists uh, go in there and, and uh, they just do some really great work. Here we go. Wineries, 65 uh, wineries and 1,300 acres of vineyards. Wow. More than you thought, huh? That you would, than you Way would more. Yeah. I would have guessed maybe 10 at the most. So uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a connoisseur by any stretch, but from what I hear, our, uh, our microclimate in, in the, that we have for, that's conducive to the, wine, uh, to the vineyards has really improved over the years. So that's why we're getting so many more vineyards here is because we, we've got this perfect kind of pockets of these. Um, I'm trying to think of what they, they refer to them as, but basically it's just we, our area. We are in high desert. Uh, most people don't know that the Treasure Valley is on the high desert. Um, but from what I understand, you know, over time, the climate's uh, created just some really great, great vineyards here. Um, oh, here's a good shot of what the, the Boise River Greenbelt looks like. So you'll get this in the guide as well. And you can kind of take a look at what's all involved in there. The scenic uh, riverside pathway. You'll see rollerbladers, bikers, you know, hikers, fishers, you know. Here's some stuff out in uh, Meridian, Roaring Springs, Springs. It's a water park just right off the freeway. Uh, immediately adjacent, you know, just basically the same parking lot as Wahoo's family fun zone. Uh, oh, here's the Caldwell Night Air uh, Rodeo that we were just talking about. I guess this is super popular. Have you been out there yet? No. <laughs> you you, you got to see it. You know, yeah, looking at all these things, there's there's just, there's an incredible <laughs> amount of things to do around here. And, you know, you get stuck in your own little bubble. But going through this list with you, it's like, man, there's, you can never say you're bored. Yeah, if you're bored, uh, you're not paying attention. <laughs> you're not willing to to kind of get out there and uh, and check it out because a lot of the stuff, you know, it's just, again, it's people coming into town for the cold, uh, from out of state for the Coldwell Night Rodeo, uh, National Rodeo to Rodeoers, um, you know, the Western Idaho Fair, people coming from all over the state, an annual event, uh, you know, typically really well done if, if you're into the to the fair thing. My kids are all adulting and, and gone, so I'm, I'm a little, little out of touch with that. But um, yeah, let's make sure, oh, Hyde Park. That's awesome. Got some great food, great hiking down there. Have you spent a fair bit of time in Hyde Park? I have. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of that bakery. That's just outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you guys can't tell, Keith's a foodie. So if you certified. want to talk, what is it? Oh my goodness! You want to go to Hyde Park? You go to Certified. Yeah. Certified. Certified yeah, and yummy. They have, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, well, it, they got their name. Uh, from the spot that they're in for uh, uh, probably ever, I don't know, a whole bunch of years was a, uh, a dry cleaning spot. Hmm. And, uh, and so when they occupied it with their bakery restaurant, um, they just kept the name. And uh, there's, they have a uh, two sister restaurants. I think just two, I, mean, I think there might be a third. I don't know. Um, in town, they have uh, up on the bench. Um, it's a really cool spot uh, with the. There's a coffee shop and an ice cream place and like a burger joint mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. by the by the train tracks off, off of uh, by the uh, cemetery. Okay. And then downtown, they have another. Um, oh, it's a it's like a fancy pizza spot. Uh, but they use the same sourdough um, starter um, at, that they do. They make their they make their breakfast sandwiches with this with this fifty mm. some year old sourdough starter, yeah. and they're amazing. And then they make the pizza crust with them too. And, the, and yeah, it's <laughs> boy, get That's me awesome. started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like I warned you guys, uh, Kisa Foodie, we we both love to eat, so uh, get us started on that. Uh, we, we, we might have to do a podcast just on the, the places, the go-to places around here for food. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to do a field trip for that one. <laughs> for sure. Sample, sample the food. But uh, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, parks are, are are all over the the valley here. Uh, I think I think uh, Idaho and, and the Treasure Valley has done just a great job uh, with the different parks that we have and different activities that they do in the parks. You know, um, uh, uh, Davis uh, Park, so Julia Davis Park, Albertsons Park. Um, you know, as you can tell, they're they uh, they got some great uh, flowers and stuff in there. Um, you know, if you want to see some historic landmarks, the Boise Train Depot, uh, of course, BSU's big, uh, big here, um, you know, college uh, football for us. We don't have any professional uh, teams in town. So if you're looking for that, in the, uh, you'll have to, to go to Utah or, you know, Seattle or something along those lines. There's Camel's Back. Uh, this is a great location, hiking and biking. Right down from Hyde Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're down there grabbing the food that Keith was just talking about, you're you're right down there. Camel's back, pretty much. Uh, Tree Fort's got that's about suit. the shortest hike that you can do to see to have the best view in Boise is to go oh. up Camel's back right there. Yeah, yeah. I've been on it, but that's a good way to put it. Yeah, the shortest walk for the best view. Yeah, especially yeah. if you work downtown, you just go over there, grab the food you were talking about, take a quick hike up the hill. Um, it's got an easy route and it's got a super hard route. You know, take 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 your pick whatever you'd like to do. Um, lots of um, farmer's markets in the summer. You're, you're, you're a, you're kind of, I don't know if you couldn't, can you call it a connoisseur or a. a oh, I lady? love the farmer's market. I go down there and get lots of stuff. Uh, every, every Saturday that I'm in town, I'll, I'll go through the market, you know, not even need anything and just kind of walk through and I like to go, you know, see the people and see the stuff that's available and, um, yeah, Boise is yeah. just such an amazing place. It is. I know, you know, even I've been living here, you, you know, you and I've been here for multiple decades, uh, but you, you go through this list and I think to your point, you just said earlier, it's like, wow, I keep, you know, forgetting about that or forget about that. And, you know, um, it, it's interesting because as long as I've been here, people still bring up things that I need to do that I haven't done. I'm just kind of, I'm like, wait a minute. I would have think I'd either heard about or done the majority of these things, but for whatever reason, there's still things that I hear about. <laughs> uh, zoo's pretty well done. That's always fun, uh, especially with the kids. I love the zoo. Yeah, yeah, we went not too long ago. Yeah, they do a pretty good job. Um, sand dunes. Uh, here's an example. I hear about Bruno dunes all the time, and I, I just have yet to be out there. I've never been there either. Uh, which is crazy. You've got like uh, sandboarding, you know, they got a big absor obs observatory out there. Um, it just sounds amazing. Just for whatever reason, have been, that is a, a little bit of a drive. I think, I think it's like an hour, hour and a half or something like that. But um, Cuna Caves, yet another place I haven't been to yet that I hear amazing stories about. Oh, here's that whitewater park that I was telling you about. We've got some better uh, photos on the the website of that, um, but that's just a man-made water park, um, you know, for your surfing and kayaking and all that. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Um, and then of course you've got your, your, there's, your music and theaters. What's up? Yeah, there's, there's that, that, that's a great park. There's three, three ponds down there to paddleboard in. You can, you can paddleboard from one to the other, um, right next to the, to where the surfing is. Mm -hmm. You can paddleboard in that just down from that part of the river too, right? You can paddleboard almost mm -hmm. up to where they uh, yeah. do the surf. It gets a little shallow, but yeah, no, it's it's amazing. I don't know. I thought I turned it off so that uh, my phone wouldn't be ringing here, but apparently I didn't do it right or didn't do it. <laughs> um, you know, Shakespeare's Festival. This is down of the um, uh, right down there by the old uh, penitentiary that we just talked about. So that's all down there. I've been to a couple concerts there. That, th those are amazing. Of course, our capitals are really no. well done too. What's up? I've not been to the to the Shakespeare. I'd love to. I uh, I saw Willie Nelson in the botanical gardens, though. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to the, the year, year he turned eighty, which was like almost ten years ago now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. But um, yeah, I mean, the list, you know, we could make a, a half day podcast out of this if we wanted to just drilling down into these. But like I said, that's why we've broken these out into their own kind of separate um, podcasts. And we will, you know, they're, they're, they've got their uh, link on the website. 
you know, I, I haven't done a bird watching one because <laughs> I don't know anything about bird watching. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, horseback riding's big here. Uh, I guess we've got some great rock climbing uh, uh, just east of here. My brother used to be a rock climber. Um, so I was surprised that uh, there was such a good uh, presence of rock climbers here. Uh, surprisingly, you, uh, golfing's awesome. You're, you're a golfer, Keith. Uh, this is probably your one of your mainstays for the summer, isn't it? I love to golf. Yep. Uh, Shadow Valley is my favorite in town, but uh, I got to say probably my new favorite is the one that's uh, 0.6 miles from my house here. <laughs> Didn't you get like a season? <laughs> <laughs> Walk over there type thing? Yeah, I ride my bike. I ride my, uh, my beach cruiser over there. That's awesome. What do you, oh, you, what do you do with clubs? Let's put them on my back. Really? I wear a I wear a backpack, kind of a uh, golf cool. bag. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I hate to skim over this stuff uh, so quickly uh, because it's all so amazing. But again, you know, this is kind of the high level, you know, thirty thousand foot view of of, of summer here. Um, but um, man, as you can tell, it's just uh, just some really amazing. Amazing stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to think of anything we haven't covered so far that we absolutely should mention. Um, but I think we've, we've hit the, the highlights and there's so many of them. Um, yeah, I think the Discovery is a must, Center is a must see. Um, the uh, MK, former uh, Morrison Knutson Nature Center. Um, one interesting thing about summer up here is is if you're if you're from somewhere like I am where um, we didn't really have a summer on the central coast of uh, California um, it it uh, the weather is so consistent here like it's summertime so you know it's gonna be nice out and you can plan accordingly like I think that's that's just a really cool aspect. It's yeah. just, it's going to be nice. Most likely. Yeah. And then, you know, until the next season begins to, to come in and then it's very obviously becoming the next season, you know, summer to fall. It's like, okay, temperatures dropping, you know, further and faster and time to, you know, store your mountain bike and, you know, think about getting your skis or board over to the, to the shop, <laughs> you know, to get them ready for the next season. There was one up here I was thinking of, um, oh, it was the, um, a lucky peak. This is not too far from town. Um, you know, if you, if you want to get your boat out there or just hang out at the beach, you can tell at the bottom of the dam, uh, there's, uh, you know, just places to kind of hang out on the beach here or, you know, swim or paddleboard or, or what have you. Um, but this lake is actually pretty good size. It is. It's a little choppy for paddle boarding on the lake because there's there's generally lots of traffic around there. But yeah, but down just here, down, right? Just down from the dam, yeah, where the river just past that park right there, um, is a great place to paddleboard right on the river. It kind of calms down and widens up, and uh, and you can you can paddle around there. Very yeah, nicely. and there's a park just a, a little bit to the south here. Where you that's what be... exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And that's where you can begin your green belt tour. Like if you want to, you know, bike it. Or... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'd, you'd launch from there. That would be a logical place to go. You can, you know, get on whatever entrance you want onto the green belt. But if you want to make like a day of it and, and see it all, that's where I would say drive up there, you know, from town, probably 15, 20 minutes, depending on where you're at in town and just, just go for a ride, go for a walk, uh, make for... A, a beautiful day but um yeah i mean there's just so much here we've got the boise hawks um so if you want to watch uh you know non-professional baseball uh that's an option oh the basque uh center downtown that's pretty i think cool. we have the largest basque community outside of uh um spain yeah i've heard we've got a real significant basque presence here which would make sense, right? I mean, they literally have a block <laughs> hub in uh, Boise celebrating Basque uh, heritage. But um, they do their celebration every five years. Is it highlight or what? I forget the name of it. Same, yeah. I don't, I don't know. 
but um yeah well anyway we're, we're you know we're covering things that, that you can read here and kind of interjecting you know our thoughts and our experiences and all this but um you know all to say that this this, this stuff is, is is absolutely amazing as keith mentioned earlier you you know if if you're not uh finding something to do you're not looking because there's 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 plenty of it but um yeah, other than that, I just kind of wanted to, um, oh, uh, I, I just want to, you know, wrap things up because I think we're getting a little long uh, on the, oh, we are on the podcast here. Um, just wrap it up by how you could take advantage of the perfect uh, home buying process. If you go to our website, uh, well, you can either comment below if you're on YouTube or most social media and just reference uh, perfect home buying process. You'll see our, our email address uh, and our, our phone number here. Um, and then you'll see, uh, right below that, the relocation guide that I mentioned here, but anyway, the perfect home buying process, just reference that we'll get you scheduled for that, uh, no obligation consultation. Just kind of talk about what it is that, um, that you'd, you'd like to do, um, in the way of, uh, you know, purchasing a home, what your objectives are. And, uh, we'll, you know, we'd like to see how we can, how we can help you out again. Here's some snapshot of, uh, of what's all included in the uh the program but other than that i'd just like to thank you again keith for for jumping on the podcast my pleasure thanks for having me yeah. and i want to this is is high aldi yeah and it's the the oh. end of end of july next year will be the five-year celebration there you go very cool yeah thanks for for looking that up for our, especially for our basque viewers <laughs> we've got a gentleman on the team uh mark Echeverria. he's basque as well so we could we could certainly pick his brain maybe we'll talk him into, you know, showing us around and giving us some more insight that we might not otherwise get. <laughs> well, very cool. All right. Again, uh, thanks, uh, Keith, for, for hopping on. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll just sign out by wishing everybody a blessed one. Take care.